So as usual, I'm at GT Auto Garage, which is where I seem to live most of my life. I brought my Supra back here so we can do a comparison showing some different exhausts. We're even gonna do a hood exit at one point. But while we're here, we just happened to run into something pretty interesting on the dyno. And uh, we have an FK8 Civic. This is one of the guys that I'm constantly up against when I go to the track. So this is our i30. And I was very curious to see what he's done to his car to kick my ass every time we go to the track. Aside from the fact he's probably a better driver than me. So let's go have a chat to Dave about what has been done to this car. Because you've been pretty much in control of all, done all the mods since this was totally yeah. stock, hey? Since it was brand new, yeah. So what have we got done? First of all, so we've started the mods off with um, a cooling package from PWR. Um, they, this was the first prototype um, intercooler they designed for us. Um, also, they then got, uh, you can't really see, oh yep, top here. So, PWR radiator. Yep. So it was basically, that was our first mods to the car, even with stock, with no ECU or everything. That was our first port of call. They've, since day one, have had a bit of a cooling issue. Yeah, especially for Australian climate, yeah, I guess. Yeah, correct, yeah. Cool. It's, I mean, not so bad at the moment. We're in winter at the moment, yeah. but, um, but yeah, with our 30 plus degree track days and yeah. it's a um, bit of an issue. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically that was our first mods. Then we put a Honda on it. Yep. Um, then so a Honda is that's it's a, a flash, factory. Yeah, it's a factory ECU, just reflashed. Then we added the high flow cat on the dump pipe. We put the HKS intake kit on it, so carbon HKS box. But the only thing we're looking at doing next for him is for the cooling is to help out with again with the FK8 stuff is the late model ones have this grill here is actually all the way up. Okay. So this blocking it won't help at all. Either. Okay. Stock turbo. Stock turbo. Yep. So standard turbo at the moment. We've, we're waiting um, on the, there's a HGS development turbo coming out. What about this guy? That so stock? That's a PWR unit. It was a one off for us. Okay. Yeah. I should say it's got all HKS um, suspension in it. Yep. So it breaks uh, standard? standard just with um, we've upgraded two piece with endless pads. Yeah. Um, front and rear. Yeah. Um, and we just run the semi slicks. So what we're testing today though is going to be the big one, mm. I believe. What is it, the M142 and see back to back how it compares. And so this is a full plug and play. Yep. Full plug in. So standard. There's an adapter in behind here. Yep. The standard ECU literally plugs straight onto it. So it uses the standard ECU for body control and no, 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 no. Factory ECU is fully taken out. Oh, it's gone. Okay. It's got a, it's got this billet. Um, oh, it's okay. like an interceptor, I guess. It's yep. like a, a junction box between the M142 and the factory control. Yeah. All the can addressing on the factory is all held. Um, so all, is all controlled by the motor. All the dash, everything. Everything works. Okay. Everything, like cruise, all your optional stuff. Plus, you can then obviously get all your Motec options of your traction control and your launch control and your, you know, you can pretty much just tick all the boxes and... Does it do flames? <laughs> you always ask that question. <laughs> Today's test is really about to see how much difference you get from a flash tune or a, I mean, it's not just a flash tune, it's, it's live no. flashing, it's better than normal yeah. flash. Yes, but... it's all live, it's, and that's what I said, don't get me wrong, the, the um, Hondas are really good, like we've had no issues with them. We've actually got them on a heap of other Hondas, again, for the development side, because HKS are obviously doing us a deal with this, yep. so we have to have the data to back that up. And that's something that you probably can't be logging properly with? No, okay. yeah, not as accurately yeah. as what this can. Now I spy, can you power up the ignition so I can oh, see yeah. this? So this is, I think I may have sold them this part. You did. <laughs> this is a Zytronics E85 or ethanol content analyzer. Let's see how much ethanol they're actually running. E44. Yeah, so we don't whisk the current fueling system you can't do a full 85 no no okay. you kind of that's the max like e50 you wouldn't want to go over yep um, and that'll help the car run cooler as well correct okay yeah. hence and that was one of the reasons why we put it on we actually have had that on with the honda yeah um, and again, so there is inputs on the factory ecu for that yeah so basically the second cooling temp sensor because these are on two cooling temp sensors yeah which so obviously one's a bit redundant well yeah well, it is now <laughs> <laughs> it's not anymore because it's into the motec and the original secondary um Temp sensor is back into the radiator. Yeah. Um, but with the Honda, yeah, you disconnect that and you backfeed the voltage for that into it. Okay. 
Um, so yeah. But and so that full flex fuel now, he can run 98, he can run anything up to E50. Correct. Now that we've explained that, let's see what power puts out. What are you, what are you thinking? What, what did we make before? Totally stock 287 and the Honda pulled us up to 352. Yeah. Uh, and that's 17, 18 pound versus 25 pound yeah, on the Honda. So, yeah, 24, 25. Okay. Yeah. Um, and a 65 horsepower or more. That's decent. a pretty decent, decent. Yeah, for a uh, flash. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All yeah. right, let's, uh, let's see how we go with the MoTeC. Cool. So Basically from stock, is original with no standard ECU, 286 horsepower. Respectable. And yeah, for just on 400 newton meters of torque, which is pretty average for most of them. Yep. Um, and then we went up to, so then we put the Cobb on it. Oh, and the Honda. Honda. Honda <laughs> <laughs> I got Cobb on the brain. Honda um, yeah. onto it. And we went, again, with their boost control with the Honda, it's not as refined. Um, I guess the best wording for it would be. Um, whereas a Motec, you can pretty much tell it to do whatever you want it to do, at no matter what RPM. So it, um, it ramped the boost up really fast yeah, in the Honda. A lot so, harder. Okay. Yeah. Um, Which is probably for well, longevity, a, not not so good for a stock internal motor. Yeah. Um, so that's why. One so of if the it was reasons, a built engine, you wouldn't give a shit. Oh hell no, <laughs> no, no. But for a circuit car, you're still worried about it because you don't want that coming yeah. on that hard. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that was, so the next grey line, this is with the Honda on there at 20, just on 25 pounds. 25 through the mid-range and then it backed off to about 24, 23 okay. top end. And what are we talking on and the Motec? And the Motec through the mid-range here, um, we're at 18, 19 pounds. Just and to then, limit the way that it came on. Yeah, yeah. just to help those rods out. <laughs> um, and then basically through to the top end, we're up to about 24 pounds. Okay. That's a big difference in power. So what's the delta so then, between the... So then we're up to... Yeah, torque not so much. It holds torque a lot nicer through your whole top end, which yeah. is obviously being on circuit. You're going to be above four grand up to six and a half, which is where you want to be so sitting. 23 Newton meters difference between the Honda and well, the... Well, yeah, that's through the mid-range, but then... Up here, much bigger difference. Much bigger difference. Um, mainly for the boost side of things, there's 55 Newton meters straight through. Yeah. Difference there. Yeah. Um, but we're talking, yeah, 48 horsepower difference top end. Yeah. And which, it's it's a fat difference yeah. all the way from all the here. Way. Yeah. So similar Literally to there, from, yeah. and then from what, 4,000 4, onwards? 4,000 on, it holds and yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, so all in all, the Motex come up really nicely so far. Um, now to do a road test and show the blip control with the yes, Motec. Yes, I heard the blip control people think doesn't work on the Motec. aftermarket stuff. So Well, yeah, we've been, some, some people on some forums was mentioning that you lose that function, but on the dyno it seems to be working quite all right. So we'll do, we'll do a test drive and have a, see what it does. All right, I'm keen for that. <laughs> cool. So, moment of truth, what do we need to see? Whether or not cruise control still works? Yep. Now, what other things would... Well, there's no warning lights on, as you can see. So you can go... Comfort. I say all the suspension controls still good? So no, that's... Is it's, that... got, it's got HPS oh, okay. coilovers. So the, what, are the, what are these for? Is so that... this is um, like, yeah, amount of boosts you run. So this is like... Oh, so you the... still have adjustable boost from... Yeah, so through the Motec, you can adjust your level of boost through each setting. Okay. Um, so that's your comfort. That's your sport, and then your R mode. Okay, so each one you can change the boost for each. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, pretty cool. Percentage of torque, yeah. Okay. Torque managed. Okay. So. All right, but um, I think it's what the upshift and downshift blipping. Yep. Launch control and uh, yeah, we won't be doing launch today. But yeah. 
we'll yeah. just wait for Alex to do that himself. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Traction, does it? No. <laughs> there you go. Is it doing it? Yeah. Okay, so now your foot's off the accelerator and it's cruise control's working. Yep. There you go. So it retains all the factory cruise and factory flipping and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. There we go, we put that little myth to bed. That's right. That's the purely the only reason why Alex beats me at the track. It's nothing to do with him as a driver. It's just all car, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Excellent. Well, mission accomplished. Everything works. Yeah. Everything's it's got a good amount of horsepower. And it'll be interesting to see how he goes next time. Yeah. See if he can. Uh... Well, it should be going by before and after dynographs. The power and torque should be a lot linear. So on track, it should equate to a, a more smoother drive. Yeah. All right. See, so folks, uh, that should have given you pretty much all the info that you needed of the stock versus Honda versus Motec and uh, dispelled the myth that you lose all the factory body control and all that the, sort of stuff. The blip ships yeah, blip and, and, yeah. There you go. All right, cool. cool. Have a good day. See ya. See ya.